What's up guys, welcome to the Crypto Savvy channel. I'm Craig and as always, we're gonna be tracking the market, see what's going on. Make sure before we begin, take one second out, smash that thumbs up, let's get this video out there. Also, if you would, share the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, tick that notification bell, that'll get you notified when I post new videos. I often talk about looking at the markets as a whole, not just focusing on one asset or just Bitcoin. That is not the way it's done, and I'm gonna show you why in this video. Um, I'm just gonna show you an example of, I know a lot of people talk about buy gold, buy silver, buy Bitcoin, hedge inflation. Well, we're gonna take a look at what happened in 2008. We'll take a look, a little look at what happened in 2000, or I'm sorry, 1980 um, on the DXY, things like that. I've been extremely bullish on the DXY, and I believe um, I've explained before, I think all the big money gets into the DXY, gets into the dollar, so when the markets go down, they can get back in at a low price with a high value dollar um, and they, they scare everyone out of the dollar by inflation. I'm just gonna show you some examples on that. We're gonna take a look at the Dow Jones, DXY, gold, silver, and then of course, Bitcoin and what I'm looking for in Bitcoin right now. So let's take a look. As of right now, the, the Dow is at 30,495 is the time of making this video. We've been watching this falling channel. I do believe we will come back down to at least retest the bottom of this channel. And if that breaks, it's gonna get ugly for all markets. But let's take a look at what's going on. So the other day, I think it was Monday, uh, we talked about possibly getting up to this 30,885. We almost got there. Now this resistance, we keep the center of this falling channel as resistance, right? And that's about 30,800. If we were to get a spike above that, uh, then we would be looking to retest this rising channel here at about 31.3. Now, if that happens, we may get one more rally in Bitcoin, whatever, anything though that any move up, I think is gonna be very short lived. I think we have a lot further down to go for a lot longer. I'm thinking the middle or end of next year. As you guys know, I think my false bottom theory is we hit around 75 to 8,500 in February or March of next year for Bitcoin, get a big rally up to 14,000, maybe somewhere in that range, and then continue on down to as low as 3,500. I've been talking about that since December 2nd. You can check the video. I'll post it at the end of the video. You can check it out. Um, I made it on December 2nd talking about the Amazon compared to Bitcoin bubble. But anyways, let's take a look at what's going on. So right now our resistance is at 30,800 if we are even able to get up there. But if you look here in the RSI, I've drawn this trend line. We had higher highs in the RSI. And if we draw that same line from the highs up here, we had lower highs in the price action. That is hidden bearish divergence. Hidden divergence is a continuation of the trend. The trend is down. Um, no negativity here. There is money to be made going down, guys. Um, learn how to short the markets. I'm telling you, you'll be happy you did. You won't have to just depend on something to just to go up, right? So anyways, let's take a look at 2008, right? 2008 on... The Dow Jones was right here. It was a 55% crash, right? And it... Let's go back over and look at it. As you can see, it took time. Just like this is taking time, it wasn't one quick candle down like everybody wants to see. We'll also take a look at what gold and silver and everything else did. But let's see, if we were to go down 55 again, would be all the way down to around 16,000 range, which would be right back where we were around 2012, right? Do we have to go that low? We don't have to. I think we could go much, much lower. But first, we have to look at our targets, right? So our first target that we're looking at is, once we broke this, our target is around 27,000. I do believe at some point we'll get down there. Maybe we'll ride this all the way down into uh, the beginning of next year and get our little bounce here to get our false bottom for Bitcoin. Nevertheless, once we uh, break down past this 2,800, that is the bottom of this rising or falling channel. Once we break this, we have a measured move of around 22.7, somewhere in that range, depending on if, when, and where. If it takes longer, obviously it goes lower once we break this. But I do think we'll get a bounce around this 27, possibly come back up, retest the bottom of this rising channel before continuation to the downside. Uh, let's take a look at the DXY. We'll take a look at what the DXY did in 2008, right? So DXY, we can move this up now. Our trend line has moved up, so around 111.60, 111.50, right in that range, uh, I would look for a bounce if we do come down. Now that will be, 
obviously the rise of the other markets, right? Um, might get a little more push up, but I think if we do get down to this level, now we don't have to, we're above all the EMAs on the daily. Let's see where this closes. But if we do go down, I don't see it going much lower than this. Uh, if this breaks, then we'll probably get a big rally and the DXY ret returns back down to these ranges. Now let's take a look on the daily, what the DXY did in 2008. DXY shot straight up 26% in the 2008. Now let's take a look at what the DXY did in 1980 when we had almost all the same stuff going on. Back here it was cocaine was a big problem. Now we got um, fentanyl is a huge problem. Same type of stuff happens in these markets, guys. Lenny, let's see how big of a rally this was, right? So it rallied in the 80s about 100%, right? Let's see where that would take us on the DXY, put this down to where the bottom was, bring it up to 100%, look at that, it goes right to our target, and where was that target on the weekly? Around 178 to 180, and what is that? That is the measured move of this falling wedge here, we broke out over here. I've been talking about this forever, but first we have to break this 122. I think we'll probably get a pullback once we get up to this 122 range, maybe come down and retest here before continuation up. Obviously it doesn't have to, but once we break this 122, I think it's gonna be pretty quick. Like I said, maybe middle or end of next year, we see these levels uh, maybe longer. It could take much longer. We'll see what happens, but that is my ultimate target around 178 to 180 range. Now gold. Here is gold in 2008. Gold fell 34%, almost 35. Here's my gold chart from over a year. We've been looking at this. Uh, first target being 1561. If that breaks, then we're looking around the 1432. If that breaks, we have much, much lower targets, right? Uh, depending on how it all goes. But even if we did the same retracement at 34 percent that would get us down to approximately 1350 range um, if it was to happen like 2008 but again i said this is a lot like the 80s what did it do in the 80s uh, let's go back here and check it what did gold do in the 80s uh right here it, actually gold went up a little bit in the 80s right back here but in the beginning of the 80s what happened boom huge drop what was that drop 68% in about a five-year range. Is this going to take five years? Possibly. Who knows? But let's see what that would be, 65% over here. Then we'll take a look at silver. So if we went down 65%, look at that, almost to our target around 800, seven to 800 bucks. Uh, if it was to play out like that, not saying it has to, but, I, but what I'm trying to explain here is the things that people tell you to get into when markets are crashing, crash right along with it. Even oil, we're gonna take a look at that also. Let's take a look at silver. As you guys know, this chart's about a year old also. Been looking for this 15.5 15, 15, area, right? $15. Dollars and 58 cent range could obviously go much, much lower, right? But here was 2008, wasn't a good hedge, right? Remember the DXY was the only thing that went up in 2008. Let's check the 80s. What did it do in the 80s? Well, there you go. It had a massive plummet in the 80s. Let's take a measured, or let's look at the percentage on that. We bring this down approximately. 90%, right? Well, let's see what happens if that was to happen again from where we're at now. 90%. Be looking at it like a six or seven, maybe $5 silver. Is it possible? Hell yes. Is it a guarantee? No, nothing's guaranteed. I am not giving financial advice. None of this is financial advice. This is my view on the markets, and I show you guys why my view is. What makes, you know, my view a reality to me and, and what how I look at the markets. It's not like anyone else you see looking at the markets, guys. I keep it simple. I don't care about the news. I don't care about none of that stuff. I believe everything is already into the charts. News is just an excuse of why the things happen because you usually don't hear the news till after the move, right? There's a reason for that. So look at oil. So here's my oil chart. I've been posting this on Twitter. If you guys don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you give me a follow. But our oil chart, my next stop here is around this 62, which is a 1.618 extension. We did get a bounce at the point, uh, 1.27. 
uh, which could make this an ABC correction with another high. So be careful. But once we lose this, a $76 range, we're looking for 62 54 and then ultimately 25 bucks. Is that possible? Definitely. If you remember, back here it went to negative 40 bucks in 2020. So there's nothing to say that it can't go down to that 25 bucks, right? Let's take a look at what happened to oil in 2008. Boom, oil fell 77%. 77 percent, 77 percent, guys, in 2008. Let's take a look at where that would get us today. 77 percent would be approximately 29 bucks. So pretty damn close. Um, if this all plays out like this, guys, it's a huge opportunity. Um, my plan, I have a lot of cash waiting to buy into almost everything. Um, that is my plan, doesn't have to be yours. I could be totally wrong. Either way, I have points to watch that will negate all this, right? So I've showed you guys all my my highs that I'm looking for, if those get broken, then you know things can change. And if it changes, I'll let you know. But right now, uh, we would have to get back above this 94, uh, 94.50 range in oil to uh, make this not happen, in my opinion. If you guys are interested in trading before we get into Bitcoin, definitely check out Prime XBT by far. My favorite exchange. They don't trade against you. Link down below. I also have a tutorial that'll come up alongside my Amazon video at the end of the video. Um, you can use my promo code SAVVY50. That'll get you up to a $7,000 bonus. SAVVY25 will get you 25% off your fees. And no, I'm not pushing this exchange. They do help support the channel. But... If I was doing that, if it was about getting people into trade to lose money, I would put a bunch of links down there to BitGet and Bybit and all the other scammy exchanges just like everyone else. I'm not. That's why I only put the one there. Um, I actually like this exchange, right? So anyways, let's take a look at the bigger picture here. Here is the, the well, this is a four hour. Uh, looking at the daily on Bitcoin, we've been watching this for a while. So the daily is getting a bounce off our trend line right here. Remember, I said if it closes below this trend line, which it has not yet, uh, then we would have more downside. Uh, right now, we can, let's move this over. That $20,000 $20, dollar range is the 55 EMA right here. I would have to see a break above that and a daily open and close above that before I start looking for higher targets, right? So the bottom of this trend line now is around 18.2. We've been waiting for a break at 18.2. This is getting real tied up here. Now, what we could see here is something like this. You know, we get a spike up, come back down, and just bounce, and then this fizzles out, and it could be a while for our big move. But once we break this 18.2, as you guys know, my next target is this 14.5, and probably get a bounce there maybe back up, maybe even all the way up to 18.2 before continuing down. But then ultimately, like I said, um, 75 to 8,500 is my next target. I expect a big rally there, get everyone bullish again, and then come back down. Uh, this 34, 34 to $4,500 range, as you guys know, is my big picture target. I'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, but let's look at the four hours, seeing if that's given us any better view here. So on the four hour, we are getting rejected at the 55 EMA on the four hour. And this right here, this trend line, if we do get a spike above there, we could draw another trend line right off of these wicks here. Could go as high as that 19.554. But remember, 20, we may see a quick wick to 20, whatever, if it even breaks, guys. But my opinion here, the macro still is extremely bearish. I'm going to continue to be bearish unless things change. And what will it take to change that? The weekly has to get above this 55 EMA. If it was to go up straight up today, it would be around 30,300. This is declining by the weeks. Unless we get above this 55 EMA, the macro remains bearish. Here's my targets off the macro. First one being a measure move of the rising broadening wedge. Gets us to about 14.5. Next one being this as a flag pull, that being the bear flag, 18.5. And then, of course, the break of this weekly trend line up here, looking at the whole thing as a flag pull, this being the bear flag, gets us down to that 3,800 range. Yeah, it's a little off from the 35, but guys, it's it, this thing is playing out beautifully. I made this chart on December 2nd. I also made a video, um, and it's playing out beautifully. That would get us to our false bottom sometime in February or March, then we'd have a big rally into April, maybe May, 
and then a crash from there to go to our final low, which would be the middle or end of 2023. I still believe that's a good possibility. Now, what happens after that, we look at the bigger picture, could look something like this. If this plays out, this is the biggest money-making opportunity I have ever seen. There's tons of long opportunities in here, tons of short opportunities in here, another long opportunity here. If this does play out like this, guys, man, the money to be made here will be amazing, right? This is right here is the Amazon chart overlaid on the Bitcoin chart. As you can see, playing out almost to the T, guys. This is amazing. Can it be broken? Yes. Like I said, watch this 55 EMA. Until we break above that, we can get wicks above the 21 EMA, which is the blue line. But uh, nevertheless, until we break this 21 EMA, I believe there is absolutely no reason to be bullish um, in this market. I may wait for a break to this to even start buying in i may buy some down at the bottoms here um at this 75 to 8500 might be a good place to get in and ride that to you know 12 to 14 thousand start taking profits along the way if this does play out or get in down here and if that is the bottom just keep trailing it with stops um i told a lot of people to do that back when we got our bounce in 2021 you know, I, I said to long in mid-June, if you want to do that, I didn't long. I don't long in a bear market. I do believe the bear market started here. Uh, just This was just a kind of fake everyone out, bulls and bears, right? I didn't think it'd get to a new all-time high, but I did look for the ABC correction, which we got. We ended up getting that, right? Anyways, um, another thing to watch here is going to be this RSI trend line. Just like in Amazon, I think we're going to break that with our false bottom, get everyone bullish because that's a weekly trend line, right? That's super bullish just to come back down, retest it, just like we did here, making a lower low. Um, and if that's the case, like I said, tons of opportunity there, guys. Anyways, I think that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you smash those thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Tick that notification bell. Share the video. Get it out there. Let people know. Um, anyways, give me a follow on Twitter and check out these two videos. Take it easy, guys. I'm out.